On day one, I spawned into the middle of the Black Forest as Herobrine, Minecraft's spookiest phantom. Well, a baby version of Herobrine anyway. But why am I here? I was on some kind of altar with a sinister robed figure standing and staring at me. Yes, yes, my plan worked. This is the growing sign that my powers are growing. Plan? Powers? Who are you? And what's going on here? You don't know the name of your master, boy. I am Dorian, the drowned necromancer, master of the undead. And you are my servant. Servant? I didn't sign up for that. I don't even want to be a ghost. I want to have a body. What you want doesn't matter. Without me, you wouldn't exist. And unless I choose to give you a body in the next 100 days, your spirit will fade away into nothingness. Bow to me, boy. Never! And my name is Zozo. With all my might, I jumped out of the altar and ran off into the forest as fast as I could. I didn't want anything to do with Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and his plan to get more power. I need to work on my plan, getting my body back. When I was convinced that I'd lost Dorian, I hid under a tree for the rest of the day. As a restless spirit, I couldn't even get any rest. Being here, Brian, sure isn't easy. On day two, I decided to further explore the Black Forest. It was dark and spooky, the exact kind of place that a scary spirit like me would be summoned. If I wasn't a ghost myself, I'd be afraid of running into a ghost around here. And, oh geez, I only have five hearts. I thought ghosts were meant to be more durable than this. But I didn't have time to wallow in self-pity for long because a gang of frightening dread liches emerged out of the trees. Why is everyone around here so eerie? We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He gave us new life, so we owe everything to him. Oh, that's just my luck. And I guess you want to kidnap me and take me back to him for his sinister plans. Huh. We didn't expect you to already know this. I guess it saves us some explanation time at least. In the name of Dorian, we come and dare your soul! The Dread Liches punched me! With no weapons and very low health, I didn't have any hope of fighting back against them. Instead, I turned around and ran as quickly as I could. My soul, my rules! The Black Forest seemed dark and infinite, so at least it wasn't difficult to lose those nasty liches. The downside was that I'd gotten lost myself, and as I wandered through the forest, getting more and more creeped out, I ran into a siren! Ah, oh, another ghost! How exciting! Wait, you can see me? Of course I can see you! I'm a psychic! Sarah the Psychic Siren, General Services. Pleased to meet you! So, you're not going to try to steal my soul like everyone else I've met? Steal your soul? Heck no! I'm a huge supporter of spirits' rights! Come with me, my new ghost friend! I'll introduce you to my boss. Finally having met someone nice, I followed Sarah the Psychic Siren through the trees. On day three, Sarah led me through the forest until we came upon a small cottage. A sign outside read, Psychic Services for All Ghosts. Wow, I had no idea this kind of place existed, Sarah. There are more ghosts in this forest than you think. It's got to be someone's job to take care of them and help them along their way. Suddenly, the front door opened and a geomancer stepped out. Zozo, meet my boss, Jerry the Geomancer. Jerry, I found Zozo here wandering through the Black Forest like a restless spirit. He needs our help. Is that a fact? It's nice to meet you, Zozo. Tell me, how did you find yourself in this difficult situation? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I was summoned and bound by this guy called Dorian, the Drowned Necromancer, and he told me that if I didn't serve him, I'd disappear in 100 days. It's gotten me pretty worried. <sighs> It's concerning. I've heard of many cases caused by this Dorian fellow, a truly dangerous customer. I'm gonna put Sarah on your case. She'll come and help you build a base and get situated. And together, we'll get your body back. Thank you, Jerry and Sarah. I'm feeling better already. Let's go, Zozo. With the mission to get my body back decided on, Sarah and I journeyed further into the forest to get started. From day four to day five, Sarah and I explored the Black Forest until we discovered an area with a nice, flat terrain. So, Sarah, what do you think we should do first? I'd say cut down a few of these trees. That'll give you some of the wood you need to build a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. 
Great idea, Sarah! I cut down a tree and made a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. From there, I mined enough stone to also create a stone pickaxe, axe, and a stone sword. It's difficult to hold this stuff, being a ghost, but I'll try my best. That's the spirit, Zozo. I cleared enough space in the forest to start laying down a basic base, collecting some extra wood along the way. It started off with a pretty basic setup, with just a room for me and a room for Sarah. Oh, this is a nice setup, Zozo. I guess living with you technically means we're living in a haunted house. Yeah, I guess so. Say, this is probably a pointless question to ask, but is it possible for ghosts to eat? Because I'm getting really hungry right now. You're in luck, Zozo. I have an enchanted apple that ghosts can eat in my inventory right now. Enjoy! Sarah gave me the apple, and I ate it. Instantly, I felt my power starting to grow. I had 20 hearts now, and I developed a new ghost ability, warping from place to place. This is fascinating, Zozo. I feel so lucky that I'm getting to see it. From day six to day eight, I went wandering around the nearby Twilight Valley, looking for more rare enchanted food. As a ghost, my ghostly hunger was really difficult to satisfy, and Sarah didn't know how to enchant more food. It kinda sucks to be a ghost. I still have a lot of the downsides of being human, plus a bunch of new downsides. But while I was wandering around the valley, I heard some commotion and ran in to see what was happening. Maybe I can help someone. In the distance, I saw a Vindicator Chef, one of the most powerful types of chefs in the world, being attacked by a nasty gang of skeleton vanguards. A chef, huh? What a stroke of good luck. I used my new ghost power to warp over there and pulled out my stone sword. With all my focus and determination, I fought all of the skeleton vanguards until none remained. It was only me and the Vindicator Chef. You saved my life, sir. I owe you a great debt. What is your name? I'm Zozo. Zozo, a strong name for a strong hero. I am Victor, Victor the Vindicator Chef. And if you do a favor for me, I will repay your kindness by any means necessary. That sounds like a good deal. What kind of favor would you like me to do? Follow me and I'll show you. I followed Victor the Vindicator Chef deeper into the Twilight Valley, excited to get him on my side. From day nine to day 10, Victor took me to a clearing in the valley where a huge moon skeleton was waiting. Oh geez, that thing is a monster. You want me to defeat a mutant skeleton? I believe in you, Zozo. Seeing you take down all those skeleton vanguards makes me completely confident in your ability to slay this beast. Go forth. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Victor. I steeled myself as best as I could and warped over to the mutant skeleton. It immediately started attacking me and I started attacking it back. But my attacks were barely doing anything and its attacks were taking way too many hearts off of me. I gotta get out of here. I warped away from the fight and ran back to Victor, telling him the disappointing news. Oh, well, I'm sure you tried your best nonetheless. I suppose we'll go our separate ways. No, hear me out. I could really use a Vindicator Chef back at my base. You're the only type of chef who can cook the type of enchanted food I can eat. How about you stay at my base, and I promise I'll come back and defeat this mutant skeleton when I'm strong enough. That sounds like a good deal to me. Lead the way, dear Zozo. From day 11 to day 12, I return to the base with Victor the Vindicator Chef. I know it isn't much, but it's home. I'm going to make you a room. Thank you, Zozo. I'll get working on a little something of my own in the meantime. I got to work, gathering up new materials, and started building a new little bungalow for the Vindicator Chef to stay in while crashing at my base. What do you think, Victor? This is a nice little room, Zozo. Thank you. And you can come and see what I made for you, too. Go and check your room. I walked over and saw that Victor had made a high-end kitchen in my base. Perfect for cooking up the kind of enchanted food I could eat. This is amazing, Victor. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. But the kitchen is only one side of the equation, Zozo. I need some good quality ingredients. Perhaps we should build a farm on the base. That's another excellent idea. I decided to build a little enclosure and went out into the black forest where I found a bunch of chickens. It wasn't hard to herd them back to my base. I can taste the eggs and fried chicken already. When I returned to my room to relax, I found that Sarah the Psychic Siren was waiting for me with some new information. I did some research into Dorian the Drowned Necromancer Zozo and found some interesting information. He used to be a flesh and blood necromancer, terrorizing the overworld by raising the undead until one day the people rose up and drowned him in the ocean. 
somehow, Dorian returned, and he's been acting on his evil plans ever since. Wow, this guy is really scary. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to Sarah once again and asked her what she thought I should do in order to get my body back. Right now, Zozo, knowledge is power. The more we can find out, the more likely we'll be able to help you get your body back. Head out to the Twilight Valley and see what you can find out. That's an excellent idea, Sarah. I journeyed out into the Twilight Valley, which reminded me of the time that I'd failed to defeat the mutant skeleton. Why is nothing ever easy around here? But my difficulties were only just getting started. One of the dread liches who worked for Dorian the Drowned Necromancer came from behind me, ready to fight me. I serve my glorious master, Dorian the... The Drowned Necromancer, yeah, 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 I get it. Let's just fight. Fine, but way to take all the fun out of this. I battled the Dreadlich with all my might. He was a formidable opponent, but in the end, I defeated him all the same. And that gave me the XP I needed to level up again. I got bigger, stronger, rose up to 40 hearts, and gained a new offensive power, lightning strikes. Finally, some actually cool ghost powers. From day 16 to day 19, I found my way into the wooded badlands, where I continued my search for any useful information that could help me defeat Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and get my body back. During the first couple days of my search through the badlands, I didn't find anything. But on day 19, I happened upon a dusty, old book hidden out of the way. Yay, reading! I love that! But it wasn't just a fun reading experience that would engage my imagination, it was also a book that contained some critical information about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. It read, like all cardinal undead, the Drowned Necromancer has a beard of ice. Therefore, he must spend most of his time in the freezing cold, and he has a severe weakness to fire. So that's two useful pieces of information. Dorian has a weakness to fire, and he must be hiding somewhere cold. I can't wait to tell Sarah about this. But my celebration was short-lived, as suddenly a couple of dreadliches ambushed me, trying to get revenge for their friend I defeated back in the Twilight Valley. Thankfully this time, I had the power of ghostly lightning in my hands. I fired some lightning bolts at the dreadliches until they were destroyed. I'm getting my body back no matter what. From day 20 to day 22, I continued through the wooded badlands, feeling strong and confident about all the information I'd found recently. I ran into a nasty gang of hungry spiders and used my new lightning ability to zap them. These spiders are hardly a threat to me now. I decided that now was the perfect time to upgrade my gear too. I searched until I found an underground cavern and looked around until I found some iron ore. I mined the ore and smelted it into some ingots, creating an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I'm stronger than ever. Come to think of it, I have some unfinished business to take care of now. Remembering the debt I owe to Victor the Vindicator Chef, I returned to the Twilight Valley and hunted down that scary mutant skeleton I'd agreed to defeat. When I saw the mutant skeleton, I first unleashed a lightning strike, stunning it. Then I ran in and struck it again and again with my new iron sword until it was no more. A hero brine always pays his debts. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the base to let Victor the Vindicator Chef know that I had paid my debt to him by defeating the mutant skeleton. I can see that you've gotten strong, just like you promised you would. That's right, and I plan on becoming even stronger, Victor. They'll start calling me Victor too, because I won so many battles. But that's my name, Zozo. Won't that get confusing? True, I guess I'll just stick with Zozo. After my talk with Victor, I went to the underground cavern where I could mine for more iron. With my iron pickaxe, I was able to mine the iron ore in no time. In the same area, I found a treasure chest with a bunch of iron ingots that I could use to craft a full set of iron armor. I'm like a ghostly knight. I went back above and went to see Victor the Vindicator Chef again. He said he had some news to share with me. Zozo, I've made an addition to the base that I think you might really enjoy. He showed me a relaxation room that was perfect for ghosts like me. You did a really good job on this, Victor. We ghosts might not be able to rest in peace, but at least now we can relax about it. It was no trouble at all, friend. From day 27 to day 31, I was out exploring the same area of the wooded badlands where I defeated the dreadliches. I came across a farmer who was jumping for joy at the sight of me. That's not the usual reaction people have for Herobrine, so I went over to ask why he was in such a good mood. What's got you so happy, Mr. Farmer? It's because of you, Zozo. 
Those dread liches were a real snake in my boot. But ever since you defeated them, I've had no worries. Glad to hear it. Slaying evil monsters and improving lives is totally my thing. Well, there is one small worry. When those dread liches were still around, one of them scared off all my sheep. I needed them for wool. I'll help you out. You can even come live at my base if you'd like. That sounds pitchy keen, Zozo. I led the farmer back to the base, then set off through the black forest to find some sheep so I could gather the wool that the farmer was looking for. Taming them was easy enough, and soon there was enough wool to go around. Afterwards, I decided to do some decorating. These Herobrine banners will show the mobs that this base is home to one mighty ghost. With the decorations done, I found Sarah the Psychic Siren waiting inside. There you are, Zozo. You have to leave the base with me now. It's an emergency. What's going on? Come on, I'll explain when we get there. From day 32 to day 35, I left the base with Sarah and traveled through the Black Forest. Along the way, we were ambushed by a small gang of dread liches. Boy, does this feel familiar. I should have seen this coming. I am a psychic after all. We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. They really do say it every time, don't they, Sarah? They sure do. Hey, don't diss our catchphrase, or we'll have to get mean. Well, meaner. The dread liches began to attack, so I zapped them with my ghost lightning strikes. None of the dread liches I had fought before had seen that ability, so it took them by surprise, and I was able to quickly defeat them. We traveled on, and I soon noticed that Sarah and I had come to the place where Jerry the Geomancer had resided before. This time, it was completely destroyed, and the area was full of Dorian's dread liches. Hey, this is Jerry's place. Get out of here. It looks like we were too late, Sozo. This is exactly what I foresaw in my psychic vision. I knew what Sarah meant when I saw Jerry backed against a corner. He had tried to fight the dread liches on his own, but he was about to die. Zozo, is that you? It seems I won't be able to see you get your body back. Jerry, I'm sorry. We got here as fast as we could. Don't worry about me. Dorian will surely pay for this. Make sure you and Sarah protect each other. We will. Rest well, Jerry. I was so enraged by Jerry's death that I destroyed the dread liches with my lightning strikes until there were none left in the area. From day 36 to day 39, I made a return trip back to the Twilight Valley. It hadn't changed much since the other time I was here, but there was a fisherman at the local pond who I hadn't seen before. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Well, hi there, Zozo. I'm fishing. No, oh, I'm just kidding. My name is Fred the Fisherman, and I could use a hand. Sure, Fred. What seems to be the problem? I know I'd be able to catch more fish if I had some twilight worms as bait, but they're all way up there in the higher parts of the valley. Can you go get a couple for me? You can count on me, Fred. I climbed up the terrain of the Twilight Valley, enjoying the view along the way. With all that happened recently, it was nice to gather my thoughts for a moment. The moment didn't last long, though, because I was attacked by a giant. Even though it was big, it had gotten the drop on me. I took a few swings with my iron sword to make it think twice. Then I warped back a short distance and hit it with a few lightning strikes. I closed the distance back into melee range and finished it off with my sword. Soon after, I returned to Fred the Fisherman with the bait he was looking for. Happy fishing. Hope you catch a big one. Thanks. I only came here to the valley because the fishing in the ocean ain't that good anymore. Ever since that drowned necromancer rose from the sea, People have been afraid that he might have left a curse on it. He is really evil, that Dorian. A curse on the place he was drowned sure sounds like him. From day 40 to day 43, I was looking at the base after coming home from my short journey and noticed that it had been redecorated to look even spookier, which for ghosts and spirits is incredibly cool. This place looks amazing. I predicted that you would like the changes, Zozo. Sarah, was this you? I do like it, but what was the occasion? I wanted to invite some of my siren sisters to come live at the base. The new look is so they'll feel right at home. Is that all right with you? Of course. If the other sirens are anything like you, then we'll all get along nicely. A while later, the other sirens that Sarah had mentioned arrived at the base. It was right at the time she had predicted that they would arrive. Hello, everyone. Make yourself at home. Friends of Sarah are friends of mine. Thanks for being so understanding, Zozo. Living at this base together always works out when we compromise. Sure, the more the merrier. Soon after I greeted the sirens, the farmer who was also living at the base approached me so that we could talk. Well, hey there, Zozo. You're just the ghost I was looking to see. I have another job for you. 
if you're willing. Of course, I'm always willing to help a farmer in need. I heard from some other farmers that there is a mutant enderman running around and ruining everyone's crops. If you could take care of that mob, you'd be helping farmers everywhere. You can count on me. From day 44 to day 49, I took up the farmer on his request and traveled to the Taiga Mountain. That mutant enderman who was causing problems had to be around here somewhere. But it wasn't just mobs I had to worry about. Dorian was here on the mountain too, alongside a mutant zombie. Well, 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 if it isn't the hero Brine who defied me. How has the spirit been faring? You're probably close to fading away into nothingness by now. You wish, Dorian. My ghost form has only gotten more powerful, and I will use everything I have to get my body back. Easier said than done, Zozo. You really think getting your body back will be so simple? I was counting on your ghost to become a vengeful spirit. Wait, what do you mean? Do you think the restless dead can return so easily to the way they used to be? Why do you think I still carry the curse of undeath after the villagers drowned me? It's because there is no way back to life for us evil spirits. It can't be. Have I been getting stronger for nothing? Yes, embrace your rage and frustration. Become the monster Herobrine and forget about reclaiming your body. My undead will help you become what you are meant to be! Dorian the Drowned Necromancer disappeared into a fog, leaving behind the mutant zombie to battle me! From day 50 to day 53, I started my battle against the mutant zombie that had been sent against me. My lightning strikes were proving effective, but because of what Dorian the Drowned Necromancer had said, I was starting to get worried about using my ghost powers. I switched my sword and hacked away at the mutant zombie. I didn't use my warp or my lightning strike. It made the fight a lot harder, but I had to believe that I was more than just the monster hero Brian. I am going to get my body back, no matter what! The mutant zombie was defeated after a big struggle, and it dropped a spellbook once it was defeated. I took a moment to examine it, and I saw a flashback to Dorian's revival. He had just emerged from the ocean as a drowned necromancer, and was looking to get revenge on the people of the world for what they did to him, casting down lightning strikes in his wrath. He researched the legends of other powerful undead beings, and he eventually came across the story of Herobrine. It looked like he didn't just steal my body to make me into a ghost, he wanted to make me just like the dangerous and evil Herobrine from the stories. Maybe then, he'd finally have someone else as tortured and wicked as himself to hang out with. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed the farmer's quest to stop the mutant enderman in the Taiga Mountain. I found the mob in the process of a rampage, and with some nervousness, I approached. Can I actually defeat this mutant enderman without my ghost powers? The mutant enderman sprinted at me and swiped at me with its powerful limbs. My hearts were getting low, and I was still weakened from the fight with the mutant zombie. <laughs> Is that all the great hero Brian can do against me? I thought you were more powerful. That's what the story said. Believe everything you hear. I may not be the same hero Brian that is feared by everyone, but I am hero Brian myself. When I said it out loud, it made sense. I could use my ghost powers because I was the one in control of them, and I was using them to help. Take this. Ow! Lightning strikes hurt. I thought I could be the scariest, but now I'm done for. My ghost powers made short work of the mutant enderman. He dropped an item upon his defeat, which turned out to be an antler headdress. Wow. With this headgear equipped, all of my attacks would gain greater knockback. What a neat upgrade. I returned to the farmer at the base and told him that I had defeated the mutant enderman. It seems that I can always count on you, Zozo. As a reward for getting rid of that mutant enderman, I'll tell you a secret about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. What do you know about him? I was there when the villagers drowned him in the ocean. His last words were a curse to everyone. He said, soon you'll all feel the loneliness that I have felt. What did he mean? I don't know, but he probably had something real evil in mind when he said it. From day 58 to day 62, I managed to herd some more chickens into the base just to make sure we had a big enough food source for everyone. 
Then, I made my way deep into the underground cavern so I could do some mining for better materials. I used my iron pickaxe to dig until I struck diamonds and mined myself enough to create a diamond pickaxe. I equipped the new tool and kept mining diamonds until I had enough to craft a diamond sword, leggings, a chest plate, and boots. This new weapon and armor would serve me well in battle against the undead forces of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. With my first pieces of diamond armor and gear in tow, I returned to the base, and there were now floating lanterns of ghost lights around the base. I even found that a new room had been added. Sarah had been hard at work making our haunted house into a haunted home. This is just my way of saying thanks, Sezo. You've really been a friend to everyone after we lost Jerry the Geomancer. I feel like I could stay here for a very long time. Thanks, Sarah. That means a lot, too, because for ghosts like us, a really long time might mean eternity. From day 63 to day 66, I was down in the underground cavern making some expansions to the mine when Victor the Vindicator Chef came to see me. Hey, Zozo, I heard that you were still looking for your original body. There's a biome nearby where you may not have looked yet. Oh, really? Well, I'm glad you thought to tell me about it, Victor. I went back above ground and traveled to the place that Victor had told me about, the Wooded Badlands. I looked around for any signs of necromancy magic or a gravestone, anything that might lead me to my body. That's when I noticed a scary gorgon sneaking up on me. Boo! Hey, don't say boo to me. I'm a ghost. That's our thing. Sorry, sorry. I thought it would be fun to startle you. I didn't mean any offense. It seemed like she meant it. That was a relief, because I thought I would have to fight this Gorgon. You're a lot nicer than you look. I could say the same thing about you. You're the Hero Brine, aren't you? Sorta. I'm the new Hero Brine. My name is Zozo. Zozo, huh? I'm Morgan. You could still help me with a Hero Brine quest, right? I think so. What did you have in mind? Oh, you agreed. This way, a new ghost friend. From day 67 to day 70, I followed Morgan the Gorgon through the wooded badlands to find out more about this Herobrine quest she had mentioned. So, aren't you curious about this Herobrine quest of ours? Yes, actually. I was waiting for you to tell me more. Well, according to the scary stories about Herobrine, he is supposed to be the most powerful undead because of his ability to rebuild and destroy. Rebuild and destroy? Yes. Herobrine can destroy and rebuild the world however he wants. And anyone who is able to control him would be able to gain the same power. I don't have that kind of power. Not yet. That's why we're on this quest. You need to regain your power by facing down another being that Herobrine fought. That's why we're headed to the lair of the Dread Beast. We soon arrived at a part of the wooded badlands where the dangerous mob, known as the Dread Beast, was known to have her lair. Come on out, Dread Beast. I am Zozo the Herobrine, and I challenge you. The Dread Beast soon emerged and roared with anger. You think you're Herobrine? Please. I battled the real Herobrine in the past. You'll never be as powerful a ghost as him. We'll see. The Dread Beast charged in, but I knocked her back with a couple slices from my diamond sword, combined with the increased knockback from the antler headdress. She tried to resist and charge at me, but I warped out of the way and brought down lightning strikes until she was defeated. From day 71 to day 74, I thanked Morgan the Gorgon for helping me learn more about the hero brine from the stories and left her to travel further across the wooded badlands in search of my body. I was starting to get the hang of this new spooky hero brine story, and I was also starting to think it was going to end up being a pretty good one. But it's not the only story that you can find on this channel, so you should look for my other videos by typing ZO ZO into the search bar. I arrived at a rundown structure in the middle of the wooded badlands. I thought it maybe had something to do with how my old body might have lived. Yeah, I can feel it. I was definitely here before I was a ghost. But that's what you are now, so why try to go back? Dorian, it's you. Still chasing after the past, Zozo? You will become my hero, Brine, and I will use your powers to rebuild a world where everyone is as lonely as I've been. That's a terrible thing to do, and I won't let you get away with it. I tried to lightning strike him, but he was immune to the damage. When I swung my diamond sword, he struck back with his own weapon, doing far more damage than I could do to him. Fool, you actually thought I wasn't prepared to fight you. You'll get a bit stronger, but your ghost form will still fade away. Before then, I do hope you help me achieve my lonely world. What else do you have to continue on for? 
Dorian the Drowned Necromancer spared my ghostly life, probably because I was still important to his plans. One thing's for sure, I need to get stronger than he ever imagined I could be. From day 75 to day 78, I kept thinking about how I should face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He had been a restless spirit for a lot longer than me, and maybe I'd have to become just as evil as him to have a fighting chance. But I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be that kind of hero, Brian. Seeing that I was down, Sarah the Psychic Siren came to my room to cheer me up. Sozo, I foresaw that you would be sad, so I made sure to give the basin an almost invisible enchanted mist so it'd be hidden from attacks. That way, nobody will disturb us without us expecting it. That's really good, Sarah. Thank you. Let me tell you, Zozo, in my professional opinion as a psychic, I don't predict that you'll turn evil. I hope I can live up to your predictions. I went outside for a bit to get some air, and shortly after, Victor the Vindicator Chef joined me with a fresh new magic cake that he had just baked. Give this a try, Zozo. I think it might just pick you up. Thanks, Victor. I gobbled up the cake and felt a transformation coming on. I doubled in size, and my heart gauge increased to contain 80 hearts. Victor sure knows how to cook. From day 79 to day 84, I went back to the wooded badlands to see if I could face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer again. I knew this whole thing would be over if I could just shut him down. Dorian wasn't here himself, but it seemed like he might have used some of his necromancy to mobilize a few random skeletons to fight me. With my lightning strikes, I was easily able to blow away these weak undead. I wasn't satisfied with the amount of searching I'd done here, so I examined the structure more closely. That's when I noticed doors that led to a dwelling where a pink pixie was staying. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Do you know anything about who used to live here? Yeah, I do. There was a village here that was destroyed by storms, a blizzard, and a thunderstorm. There was only one surviving villager, and he was really alone. Was that villager Herobrine? Yeah, this is the place where Herobrine's story began. The land has been cursed, and plants have never grown as well here since. It's just like that curse that Dorian put on the ocean. I've got to put the hero in Herobrine and find a way to lift both of those curses. This may help you in your journey, Zozo. Pixie gave me a netherite helmet, an extremely durable piece of armor that would certainly give me a fighting chance the next time I saw Dorian. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, excited to show my friends the awesome netherite helmet I'd been given. Instead, I found a bunch of dreadliches invading my base, trying to find and attack those same friends. Oh, I can't let this slide. I don't want to overuse my ghost powers, but for the sake of my friends, it's a risk worth taking. I started firing lightning blasts left and right, destroying them quickly and dropping their morale. The rest saw my skills and took off running, but I wasn't going to let an attack on my own base slide. I came running after them. But while chasing them, I ran into a troll who seemed to be crying. As much as I wanted revenge, I didn't want to leave a clearly distressed guy on the hook like that. So I asked him what was wrong. I've been working on my novel, but I can't seem to get through it. I'm losing confidence in myself. You can do it, Mr. Troll. Just believe in yourself and try to get past the first draft. I'll be excited to read it when it's done. Thank you, kind stranger. I'll never forget this. From day 90 to day 94, I followed the surviving dreadliches into the snowy plains. It was freezing. I remembered what I had read about Dorian before. He needs to be cold. He must be hiding somewhere out here. I'm on his territory now. But I couldn't afford to worry about that just yet. I needed to track down and defeat those liches. Eventually, I caught up to them. They must have gotten exhausted and stopped. I finally had my chance. You guys are gonna pay for attacking my base. Oh, Zozo, you're so naive. Dorian knew everything. He predicted exactly what you'd do. And now you're going to get destroyed. You've never been able to destroy me before. What makes you guys think you're going to be able to do it now? Oh, it won't be us, Zozo. It'll be him. A huge, terrifying Dread Knight stepped out, and the Dread Liches all ran off. He must have been one of Dorian's most dangerous henchmen yet. Even as a ghost, I think I'm gonna ache after this one. From day 95 to day 97, I went head to head with the Dread Knight. And he was as fast and as powerful as I'd feared. And as the battle went on, I was worried I might be doomed until I got a second wind and fought back with all of my might. Soon enough, 
I defeated even the terrible Dread Knight, the deadliest of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer's henchmen. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but does this mean I'm doomed to become evil and end up serving that monster? But my worried thoughts were interrupted by a new discovery. When the Dread Knight was defeated, he dropped a notebook containing instructions direct from the enemy. Destroy Zozo. He is unworthy of the title of Hero Brine. Return to the Ice Cave when you are done. If you need anything extra to finish the job, check the chest behind the broken boulder. So now I knew that Dorian was hiding in some kind of ice cave, and that note about the chest really intrigued me. I searched the snowy plain until I found a boulder that looked half shattered, and then I found a chest behind it. And inside the chest was a battle axe! This belongs to Dorian, and I can't wait to give it back to him. On day 98, I returned to my base to tell everyone who'd helped me how all of this was going to unfold. For all I knew, it might be my final chance to speak with them. Guys, I wanted to thank all of you for how much you've helped me. I never could have gotten this far without you. This final part is so dangerous that I have to do it alone. Dorian is more powerful than ever, but I'd rather be destroyed than let him use me as an evil tool. There's no way he'd destroy you, Zozo. You're too powerful and too good-hearted. And in the end, the good guys always win, and the bad guys always lose. Here, here. After you defeat him, Zozo, I'll bake a mighty cake that we can all enjoy. Ah, and I'll farm all the best quality ingredients. You got this, Zozo. I have full confidence in you. You're all the best. I'm going to defeat him for you. All of you. And I'm going to get my body back. On day 99, I ventured back to the snowy plains with everything I needed to finally take on the big, bad beast of a necromancer who stole my body. It's time for me to show you the door, Dorian. Didn't actually take me that long to find the ice cave that was Dorian's hideout because I spotted a large guard force of dread liches waiting outside, keeping a lookout. Talk about an undead giveaway. There were so many of them and they looked better armed and armored than usual. Dorian must have known I was coming and put them here to slow me down before the final battle. It's an ingenious plan. What can I do? I think I may be of service. I turned and saw that Morgan the Gorgon was behind me. Morgan, what are you doing here? Sorry for following you. I was gonna yell boo again, but it didn't seem like the right moment. I feel like I've been missing out on all the action. Let me distract these undead creeps and you can go in there and take down the big bad guy. Sounds like a great plan, Morgan. Let's do this. On day 100, while Morgan was distracting the Dread Liches outside, I entered the ice cave and found Dorian the Drowned Necromancer waiting for me. You made it through my servants. How? It's because I don't have servants. I have friends. Oh, spare me all that self-righteous foolishness. You can't talk your way out of serving me. I brought you back. I bound you. You belong to me, Zozo, and nothing will change that. I'm going to keep fighting, no matter what, for myself and my friends. And when I'm done, all you're going to be is a bad memory. Then let's see. Time to go back to the void, silly little ghost. I unleashed everything I had onto Dorian, not giving up, even as he fought back against me. I could tell as the battle went on, he was getting weaker and weaker. I pulled out the battle axe, the battle axe that Dorian had left for his Dread Knight to destroy me. I'm sure the Void will welcome you, Dorian. And with one more strike, Dorian was no more. There was a tremendous flash, and in the moment that Dorian was destroyed, my body was returned to me. Wow, it feels amazing to be back.